So a couple weeks back, I was in an antique store looking for some gifts, and I happened to notice this. It was an old Clarion tube radio, uh, AM only, and it said on the tag that it needs some work. So I thought, well, that could be fun. So I brought it home, and since then I've been working on and off to get it back to a good condition. And as you'll see right now, I've got it now to a state where it actually works pretty well. And I'm not exactly sure how you know would have worked in original condition, but after replacing some components and fixing things up, it uh, actually runs pretty well. Here it comes in. It takes a little bit to warm up. But it sounds like we've got the uh, the very end of a basketball game here. And we can tune around. So yeah, it seems to be back to uh, full functionality, and so let's, uh, for the parts of this video, we'll see exactly how I got it back to this state. So when I got this home, uh, one of the first things I did with it was take it all apart, plug it in, and start playing around with it to see what was wrong. I mean, that's something I do with pretty much every piece of electronics I'm trying to fix. Uh, but it turns out, after a little bit of Googling, you know, after I've figured out what I thought was wrong and went to look up how to fix it, that I've been doing something incredibly dangerous and it's lucky I hadn't been electrocuted. Because this style of radio, the All-American 5, generally has a hot chassis. And what that means is that one of the leads from the non-polarized plug that they used at the time, one of those leads is soldered directly to the case, to the chassis specifically, and then you have that wooden case on the outside. What that means is that if you have it plugged in, it's non-polarized, so there's about a 50-50 chance that your chassis is hot, even when the radio is turned off. Now, um, and if I remember right, the other possibility is that you've plugged it in and it's not hot when it's turned off, but as soon as you turn it on, it can potentially be hot. So uh, one of the first things I did was rewire it, and that's a uh, pretty simple task. There's um, information online, but basically uh, you rewire it so that the neutral line of a polarized plug is now attached to the, uh, the chassis and that the hot wire coming out of the out of the plug does not go from the as as it usually did used to go from the wire to the on off switch and then to the chassis and it doesn't do that anymore and so you got to google that that's the first thing you have to do now this was a real challenge uh, when i got this all they said at the store was that uh, the tuning wire was was bad. There turned out to be more problems with it than just the tuning wire, but that was the very obvious thing, is that the, uh, the little black, there's a little black piece of string that came with this, and it looped around that, and it was pretty cruddy, and it was broken on one end. I tried putting it back on, but didn't really work. So I ended up going to the sporting goods store, and I bought some really thin, it's very hard to see, some very thin twine, that does not have any stretch to it, as far as I can tell. And I basically, I tied a loop and uh, super glued it on one end, uh, looped that around, goes to this spring, and then the other end goes back out and back around. Now, and basically the way the knob is set up, when you twist it one way, it unwinds from one side and winds up the other. And that's how you tune it. And the spring is supposed to be a little bit stretched to keep some tension on there. And so far it's working pretty well. And because this had a tendency to slip off the edge, I glued a bit of a guitar pick under there to help uh, help keep it on, help keep it from sliding over the edge. And that seems to work pretty well so far. So once I had rewired this uh, in order to make it actually safe to work on, to some extent a little bit safer, uh, I then had to replace the capacitors because when I turned it on, all I could hear was just a loud humming. And that's a clear sign of a bad capacitor. And so there used to be a whole bunch of capacitors like this dual capacitor. This was 4040 microfarads. Um, and then there were a bunch of these little wax capacitors. These are just wax and paper. And uh, so I took these out and I replaced them with their equivalents in ceramic capacitors. So ceramic, ceramic. And then that big or, uh, yellow one from before, the dual capacitor, I replaced with a pair of electrolytic capacitors. And you don't have to be too exact on the uh, particular uh, capacitance. 
So I replaced the 40 microfarad capacitors, the filter capacitors with 47 microfarad capacitors. And, you know, for instance, I think this was a 0 0.05 microfarad. I replaced it with a 0 0.047 and that should be, that works just fine. So it's not too exact. Uh, it's not an exact science. You just get something close. And this is still here. This is still original because um, it goes to what, as far as I could tell, is a phonograph in input. So you plug your record player into there, switch the knob, and then uh, play the record player through the speaker. I'm not really interested in that, so I left that alone. So when I got the radio, there was a rip in the speaker. And what I did was I used nail polish and a little bit of toilet paper to carefully patch that up. And so I applied a little bit of nail polish around the edges of the rips to kind of press them together. And then over the main part of the rip, which is under all this white toilet paper, I applied, um, I applied nail polish along the edges, put some toilet paper over it, applied a little bit more nail polish to that, and then just kind of pressed it together with my fingers to make the toilet paper stick to the, uh, to the paper of the cone. And it actually works pretty well uh, now that the, the nail polish has dried. Now, because I rewired the power cable, I actually feel confident in turning it on with the, uh, with the chassis just sitting here bare. I've tested this with a voltmeter and I'm not seeing any voltage on the chassis when I have it on or off. So if I go ahead and turn it on, this knob here, uh, that light comes on. Um, and then you can see the tubes are starting to heat up. And it's gonna slowly warm up. I can tune it with this. And being in the Bay Area, I actually get quite a bit of uh, stations, which is nice because uh, I have a pretty old antenna and it's not ideal. But it sounds good.